Hi everyone, I'm Marcy, and today I'm making buñuelos de viento, which are really popular in my culture at Christmas time. They're crispy, sweet treats that even look like a snowflake because you make them with a rosette iron. And the recipe calls for ingredients that you probably already have on hand. So hit that subscribe button and let's get cooking. For the record, there are different kinds of buñuelos. The more common ones are rolled out like a tortilla and fried. But the ones I'm making today are called buñuelos de viento, which translated means from the wind. And I'm assuming that's because we use a mold and there's all kinds of little air pockets where the wind would go through, but don't quote me on that. At any rate, here's what you're going to need. One cup all-purpose flour, one tablespoon sugar, one fourth teaspoon baking powder, one eighth teaspoon salt, one egg, one tablespoon melted butter, one teaspoon vanilla extract, and one cup of milk. You're also going to need plenty of canola oil or vegetable oil for frying and some sugar and cinnamon that we'll dust the buñuelos with at the end. And of course, a rosette iron. You can find them at Mexican markets or order them online pretty inexpensively. Just know that you never wash it in soap and water. You just use a dry uh, rag and wipe it clean. Keep it stored in plastic so that it stays clean. And also, the first time you use it, you need to cure it in hot oil. Just keep it dipped in there for about 30 minutes. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to sift together all the dry ingredients into a medium-sized mixing bowl. I've got the flour, the sugar, the baking powder, and the salt. And you want to get it all mixed. In a separate, larger bowl, I'm going to whisk the egg. And then I'll add the melted butter and the vanilla and mix it up. I'll toss in the flour mixture and then I'll begin adding the milk just a little at a time. You can use a hand mixer if you'd like, but I'm just using a regular wire whisk. Continue to add the milk and keep whisking until all the milk is in there and you've got a smooth, consistent batter. It should be kind of like pancake batter, only a little more runny. Once it looks like this, cover it and let it stand in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. Now I'm going to heat up the oil with the burner set to medium high. You just put enough oil into a frying pan or in a saucepan so that it's about two inches deep. With the oil heating, I'm going to set up a workstation. I'll put some sugar in a shallow bowl, add some cinnamon to it, and you don't need to measure, you just want to get a good mix. This is what we're going to be dipping the buñuelos in once they're fried. I'm also going to find some sort of tray to put the buñuelos on, and I'll cover it with paper towels that will soak up the excess oil. I'll put it next to the stove, and I'll be keeping the paper towels handy because I'll be using them for the mold as well. With the oil hot, I'll lower the temperature to medium-low and start heating up the rosette iron by letting it sit in the oil about five minutes. Finally, I'll take out the batter, place it next to the stove, and we're all set to make buñuelos. You always want to heat the rosette iron in the oil first. Let the oil quickly drain off, Tap it on some paper towels, then dip it into the batter. The trick is to let the batter come as close to the top of the mold without going over. Then we take it over to the hot oil, dip it all the way in. Just give it a slight jiggle and it should come loose. We'll let it cook for about one minute and then flip it over and let it cook another 10 to 15 seconds. You know it's time to flip when it starts to look a little golden brown on the tips. That's perfect. Once it's cooked, I'm going to place it onto the paper towels and let the excess oil drain out. This is what it should look like on the back, kind of golden brown on the tips. 
Then I'll get going with the next one. And between buñuelos, I leave it in the hot oil for about 10 seconds. And then I shake out of the excess oil. And I'm ready for the next one. Again, just getting the batter up to the top. If you should go over, the batter will not be able to free itself from the mold. It sort of gets stuck on top and you'll have to cut it off. So just keep that in mind. You'll definitely get into a groove as you go. While the buñuelos are still hot, we're going to dip them into the sugar and cinnamon mixture. You only need to dip the top side and they come out so pretty. Now I gotta get to work and make the rest of these because this recipe makes about 25 to 30. That one cup of flour goes a long way. Last one. And there you have it, buñuelos that are beautiful to look at and that make a delicious holiday treat. I'm gonna bite into one so you can hear just how crunchy they are. Mm. These are so good. In fact, I'd say they're dangerously good because you're just gonna wanna eat one right after the other. I know a lot of people buy these for Christmas, but they're so fun to make. Why not make them yourself and maybe even make it a holiday tradition? I really hope you try it. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post one new recipe every week. You can also follow me at Marcy Inspired on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, blessings from my kitchen to yours.